2,000 square kilometers of forest in Siberia were destroyed by a massive blast. The exact cause of the destruction still isn't known, but there's plenty of theories, including the arrival of an object from outer space. Leah Ferguson reports. Did aliens crash their spaceship here a hundred years ago? Well, that's one theory of what was responsible for the Tunguska explosion. But perhaps there are more logical theories. We hop on a helicopter to this remote Siberian wilderness to meet a man with not so wild an explanation. Russian scientist Vitaly Romeko has led over 20 expeditions to this site. This place is mysterious. People started speculating that it was an alien spaceship. I agree it was something from outer space, but it's more likely to be a fragment of a comet, a snowball-like body of ice and gas that exploded when it hit the Earth's atmosphere. A century later and the Tunguska event remains a mystery for locals. And it still provokes intense debate among scientists. But what is certain is that the celestial body caused an explosion a thousand times more powerful than the bomb that dropped on Hiroshima. And it wreaked havoc in its wake. This is one of the 80 million trees which were flattened by the blast. They toppled down in a radial pattern, but the trees in the epicentre stood standing. They had their branches stripped and looked much like telegraph poles. This phenomenon was discovered by Soviet scientist Leonard Kulik, who in 1927 led an expedition to the blast's epicentre. He measured the 2,000 square kilometres of devastation and recorded these images of felled trees. He concluded the blast was caused by a meteorite crashing down to Earth. The house that Kulik built still stands today, but his theory needs propping up. Kulik thought that a nearby peat bog was where the meteorite had made its impact. But he didn't prove this, and no meteorite fragments were ever found. Until physical evidence is discovered, we cannot say for certain that a meteorite was the cause. Intrepid explorers and adventurous tourists are flocking to this site, eager for a slice of mystery. Constantine, who set up camp here, recounts the tales of a century-old eyewitness account. They say it was a fireball flying in the sky that came down on Earth and destroyed everything around. So for local people, actually, this area uh, was a forbidden area. So their local gods said that do not go there, something crashed there, and you will also die there. And for some of the local Avenki tribe, the event of 1908 remains taboo. Malvina and her friends are scared to step foot in the vicinity. Instead, they mark the occasion tentatively from afar. My ancestors were very scared that something evil had fallen from the sky. And it was considered so bad that people weren't allowed to talk about it. I think I've picked up that influence and I'm scared to go there. We shouldn't venture into the unknown. But for many locals, the 100-year anniversary is cause to celebrate. Unveiling this monument to the Avenki god of thunder, they say it's this god that can only be held responsible for an otherwise inexplicable phenomenon. Leah Ferguson, RT, in the Krasnoyarsk region. And we can now cross live to Leah, who's near the Tunguska River, where the unexplained explosion took place. Leah, hello. Now, even a century on, scientists continue to argue about the Tunguska impact. There were some strange things about the blast. What do you know about them? Well, Anna, at the time, people record seeing a searing light, a brilliant object which ripped across the sky. And this was accompanied by deafening thunder and the ground shook. People as far as 40 miles away were bowled over by the shock wave. And there were fluctuations in atmospheric pressure which were recorded as far away as Britain. Now also at this time, the whole sky was aglow. People call this period the White Nights. 
and uh, the, the skies lit up. There were unusual silvery clouds in the sky. Now, if we accept the comet theory, then these uh, unusual white lights could be explained by the dust and the ice which were dispersed uh, by the comet's tail as it crossed the atmosphere. But we still don't know. Leah, what impact did this have on people? Were there some superstitious responses? There certainly were. At the time, people thought uh, this phenomenon, this unusual event, was a sign that the end of the world was nigh. You know, people just didn't understand what was happening. They hadn't seen such thunder and lightning on, on a scale like this um, ever before in their lives. So this led to people to, uh, to believe that uh, doomsday was here. Um, even today, the Evenki tribes people blame the god of thunder, and they say that is a god uh, who is a force not to be reckon, uh, reckoned with. Um, and they also are worried that today, a hundred years on, we might be seeing similar optical anomalies in the sky tonight. Well, we'll have to wait and see. So how are the people in the area marking the event? Well, scientists have uh, gone to the epicenter of the blast to still to try and find out exactly what happened. It may take several years to come before they quite understand this phenomenon. But the local people here in this small village, well, they're getting on with the celebrations. So it's a real village fate atmosphere here. We've got arts and crafts, food and drink, sporty events about to take place and, of course, some traditional dancing and singing. It's set to be a great celebration. Thanks a lot for that, Leah. That was our correspondent, Leah Ferguson, reporting live.